Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Anne-Marie McEwen here. Today is Sunday, January the 6th, 2018. It's 8 p.m. in New York, Los Angeles. It's 5 p.m. It's after midnight, 1 o'clock in London. And if you're in Sydney, Australia, that's going to put you at around 12 noon. But wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to the live stream or listening to the recording, either way, of LOA Today, we're glad to have you here. We're actually starting a little bit later than expected. We ran into technical issues. Which doesn't happen too often, Anne Marie, fortunately, but they did kind of, the gremlins kind of were getting in the works today, but we got it going so we can have our, our show and have some fun and share some news and see what's going on. So, how are you doing? You having a good weekend? Uh, yeah, I'm having a great weekend. I had a great holiday. I had a great New Year's. Everything, everything is good. I cannot complain. I am blessed and happy, so, and healthy, so that's great. And I'm, yes, it's, it's See, all I'm, good. It's all that's, good. How about you? That's the way to start a new year. Everything working great. I love mm-hmm. that. That's good. Yes. It, it's actually been an interesting uh, past few days. Um, we got uh, some news. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nasha and Deidre are two of our regulars. And Nasha came to, I believe it was our Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon program. I can't remember which one, Wednesday or Thursday, and informed us that Deidre was in the hospital. And not doing well and um, facing a possible emergency operation. And so she asked for our help. That's right, it was Wednesday because it was with with, um, Cindy Chavez. And she asked for some help to uh, help um, Deidre to attract not having to have the operation getting healthy. Uh, So we were talking about Neville Goddard and uh, it fit in perfectly with what we were talking about. So Cindy kind of organized a prompt to, an impromptu. group healing, group positive uh, energy send to Deidre. And we all envisioned her uh, being at the podcast on Friday in good spirits and good health and so forth and and, uh, chatting away with us during during the podcast and all that good stuff. And I heard from Nasha later, I think it was late Friday, we heard that uh, everything had worked out beautifully. Deidre was, I think she's out of the hospital. Um, the emergency surgery was not necessary, and she's doing so much better. And Nasha's comment was, just like Carlos said on Friday, this stuff really does work. <laughs> and so that was great news that we got. And uh, just wanted to uh, say hello to Deidre and to Nasha and uh, you know, wish you continued speedy recovery. And, and we're looking forward to having you join us again and, and share your commentary and so forth because uh, we love you. You're among our most loyal and regular listeners, so... We're really, we're, we're really, really glad for you. And also, um, I've had an interesting experience the last couple of days, Anne-Marie. Um, you'll, you know, and, and others who do the podcast with me know that I have been wishing for some time to get the podcast out to more and more people. I mean, we, we do our promos. We ask people to subscribe and then share the fact that they're listening to the episodes and so forth. And it's been kind of holding steady, little bits of growth here or there, but nothing really great. And kind of the, the holidays actually slowed things down just because we did fewer episodes. Um, but obviously now we're back on track now that the uh, new year uh, is passed or the, the beginning of the new year is passed. And two or three days ago, I started getting a very unexpected result that I'm pretty sure is tied to that request for broader exposure. I have been literally inundated overwhelmed with contacts from people asking me to friend them. Now, typically in any given week, I'll get, you know, one or two, maybe three friend requests, something like that. In the last 48 hours, I've had nearly 500 friend requests. And 500, 500. (laughs) Let me tell you, it's rather shocking. (laughs) Wow. Now that's for LOA today on net. Well, well, that's personally to me. That's personally to me. So, I mean, I can't draw a direct line, but I couldn't think, why would I get 500 friend requests? I mean, I I don't even reach out to friend most people. You know, most of the time I just keep quiet. I don't really post much of anything on my timeline. The only thing I ever post on is on the LOA Today page or in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group or maybe some of the other LOA groups. But that's about it. You know, and I mean, I've just been blown away by it. So... I'm kind of assuming that it's probably tied in some way to getting more listeners for the podcast. So whenever somebody's been friending me, I've been trying to share with them that we do the podcast and invite them to like the page and so forth. 
I don't know what it all means, but when you see a result like that, you say, there's something going on here. The universe is doing something. Source energy has got right. something going on here. And uh, right. we'll probably have to wait to see what it is, but wow, four to 548 hours? My goodness. <laughs> that's just insane. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. I've never that's seen that before. In fact, there were so many, and a lot of them were asking for um, instant messenger chats. I, I had like 20, 30, 40, 50 people at a time asking me for a chat. You can't do that. There's no way to do that. So, oh, my goodness. So, so wow. I, made, I made like this video to explain, hey, I'm getting too many um, requests here, so I can't do instant messenger chats with all you guys. And you know, I've been posting the video to everybody who asked for it, just... Otherwise, I can't get through the day. I, I currently still have about 250 unresponded friend requests. I just haven't been able to get to it yet. That's the way my weekend's my been going. Goodness. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. So, wow. I mean, we'll have to see what happens, but this has just been remarkable. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to make of it. I mean, it's just, it's strange. It's crazy. Yeah, and, I don't know. And they're from all over the world. I mean, they're, they're not just from, say, the U.S. or whatever. They're they're from yeah. countries everywhere. So yeah. well, I don't know. I know that a yeah. large number of them are Christians, so maybe they've somehow been drawn into some sort of a Christian circle or something like that. I don't know. But, wow. <laughs> just and really, really something. And you, you couldn't detect any similarity between between them at all? That was the only... bonds? That was the only thing. I, I, I got... Uh, Probably a half dozen who identified as pastors or bishops or ministers or that kind of thing. So that's why I'm, that's one of the reasons I and plus people were you know blessing me in the name of Jesus and things like that. So I figured okay I've tapped into something that's Christian related, but it's not like I did anything deliberately because I don't go out of my way to friend anybody. I mean I can't remember the last time I actually issued a friend request. So these wow. are all people finding me. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I. I wonder if it had anything to do with the podcast where you were where you were doing group healings, and possibly, and people were thinking that you know you're a healer of some sort or involved in that. So maybe maybe that's what that's about. I don't know. Interesting. Well, I've got news for them. We're all healers. <laughs> it's not we just are. me. Yes. <laughs> we all do it. We are all capable of doing it. That's yeah, so cool. That's but, true. Yeah. Wow. So That's true. So to Deirdre, I wanted to say, I, I wanted to give her our laughter yoga um, congratulations. Yeah. Which you, know is, you, which you know is very good, very good. Yay. Yay. So, very good, very yay, good. Yay. Deirdre for, for getting better and, and uh, oh. not needing the emergency surgery and all that. So that's, that's gotta a great be, way to start us off. It's got to be such a relief, too. I mean... Because, well, I know what, what it's like with what Louise has been going through. And I, fortunately, she didn't have to go through any surgery either. Either, But, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with a medical issue, it can be pretty frightening, especially if you're hospitalized. So yeah. her, her relief must be really, really high. And so I, I celebrate that right. with you. Very good, very right. good. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And how is Louise feeling? Good? She's better? doing better and better. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's... She was really in rough shape, so this is not going to be a quick cure, I don't think. Right. Um, but she she makes progress every single day. Um, today we actually went to the movies, which was the first time we've done that in a few months. Um, and that was That's nice. That's great. What did you see? Uh, we saw Mary Poppins Returns, actually. Oh, which nice. Was kind I of wanted fun. to see that with my granddaughter. Yeah. How'd you like it? It was good. It was cute. I mean, you know, it's it's Mary Poppins, so it's, it's really light fair. Um, and... I, I, I've heard people say, there's some people who said they didn't really like it too much, they were disappointed by it, because they were comparing it to the original, which is always dangerous. You have to, yeah. a, a film like this, right. you always have to watch it on its own. You can't compare. And of course, they have so many similarities that you can't help but compare. So that's probably part yeah. of it. And I, it also occurred to me, probably most of the kids, most of the kids, yeah, most of the people who saw it were six years old when they first saw Mary Poppins. You know? So they're, they're trying to basically compare this to a situation where they were originally watching a film when they were six and now they're 30, 40, 50, 60. You know, it's a different perspective. It's not really the same feeling at all. So you have to kind of look at it through a right. kid's eyes. Otherwise, you get disappointed. But I thought they did a good job. I thought it was very, very entertaining. And, uh, nice. I mean, it's good. It, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's light. It's very, very light entertainment. It, uh, a lot of the, the... It's the same kinds of adventures that you have in the first film. Um, updated, you know. There's a there's a Dick Van Dyke type character. In fact, Dick Van Dyke actually makes a cameo appearance at the end, which is fun. Oh, cool. 
Oh, and, cool. And Meryl Streep plays a character who's just fabulous. Just really, oh. yeah. One of, the, one of the fun Mary Poppins uh, visit scenes, you know, where they go off oh, and do something nice. magical. <clears throat> yep, she's good, in it. Please. And uh, Angela Lansbury makes an appearance toward the end as well. And sings. That's the first time I've heard Angela Lansbury sing in a long time. So, yeah, that was good. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. My granddaughter and I are spending a lot of time together now, so mm-hmm. uh, I guess that comes because I wanted to spend more time with her, so here it is. Uh, there you every go. day now, 2 o'clock, I pick her up from the bus. There you go. That's and great. And wanted my daughter to get a job, so she got a job. So uh, hey. so that's that's going really nicely. That's going well. By the way, Colleen uh, posted it. The podcast a few days ago, you talked about the podcast growing. Yes, I did. I've been talking about it a lot, but thank you for pointing out that, yes, I also did just a couple days ago. You're absolutely right. And um, it appears to be producing some kind of fruit. I'm not quite sure what to make of it because I mean, <laughs> a friend request isn't the same thing as watching a podcast, but it's a step, I guess. So, you know, maybe yeah. maybe it's the next step and it brings people in as listeners. I don't know. We shall just yeah. wait and see. If there's nothing else to do, we'll wait and see. That's and just right. see what happens. Out, yes. I'm, yes. I'm learning more and more these days the importance of just doing the journey, not trying to anticipate, not trying to figure out how, not trying to figure out you know, what I got to do to make something happen, and kind of expecting there's going to be some surprises along the way. Well, I got a big surprise. I don't know what to make of it, but I got a big surprise. And so I figure this is just one more step on that journey. And if I can stay in that mindset and stay in it positively... Got to be good things happening. I just don't know what they're going to be. That's all. <laughs> that's right. Well, when you expect the good, that's what you'll find. That's right. So, Which, by the way, was the, that was also the topic of the movie, Mary Poppins Returns. I mean, it was it was very much of a positive attitude movie. And, in fact, you have the good guys and the bad guys. And the good guys, everything's going to work out. You know, magical things happen, all that kind of thing. That's the basic idea. And the bad guys, you know, oh, no, no. Uh, terrible things are going to happen, and we're going to be snidely whiplash and we're going to do all these terrible things you know it, it's it's very black and white in that sense but it's also a good reminder that you know we get our choice we can choose which side we're going to focus on we're going to focus on the side that's good we're going to focus on the side that feels good it's positive it's up to us right right and that's that's the whole thing is your perspective on on everything is your perspective it's mm-hmm. like <clears throat> i was listening to wayne dyer this morning and he was talking about and he was quoting somebody else, even I don't remember who. And it was, you know, how do you see the world? Do you see mm-hmm. the world as dark and ominous and evil, or do you see the world as getting better and people growing more and more in harmony? And you know, how do you see it? I mean, it's a it's a sort of a basic question, but it it will tell tale which way you're pointed. So it does, and it's actually. It's something that I am very drawn to in terms of the the topic or the question, so to speak, of positive versus negative, in part because I notice I get lots of opportunities in my life to focus on the negative, and I think most people do. And in the process of being faced with those opportunities, it's almost like a day-to-day challenge. Okay, here's one more negative. Are you going to focus on this negative? Here's one more. Are you going to focus on this one? How about this one? How about this one over here? Then we have this one here. And every single time, it's which way you're going to focus? Which way you're going to focus? I'm, I'm actually hoping I get to the point where I get more positives than negatives. That hasn't happened yet. So far, it's like one negative after another. Like, no, thank you. 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 <laughs> At some point, that's uh, got to yeah. change, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure uh, as the more you start looking for positive things or or even finding the positive things within the negative things. Yeah, sometimes you, know? you can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, or, or find, can, a, uh, find a way to look at it differently from the way that your initial perspective shows you, which is right. a challenge. That's, right. that's not easy. Right, so. but there's always, when I believe anyway, whenever there's something that happens that you initially think is negative, um, and, and, and in many ways it is negative, uh, if you look for the positive, mm-hmm. you'll ultimately find it. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes it may take years for you to actually find that positive or see the positive thing that came out of that negative circumstance. But mm-hmm. usually it it comes out pretty soon. Usually you can find it if you look for it. But most people, 
don't bother looking for it. They just keep complaining about what it is that happened that was so terrible. Mm. And, of course, doing that will get you nowhere fast. Or get you where you want to go, where you don't want to go fast. Let's put it that way. It'll it'll take you to places that you want to stay away from as much yeah. as possible. But yeah, it'll right, it'll right. bring them quickly too. <laughs> it's scary how quickly they come. <laughs> well, time is a funny thing. That's one of the things I thought maybe we could talk a little bit to, about tonight was time because oh okay, you know, uh, um, even in listening to Wayne Dyer talking about. Um, uh, about different philosophies and principles you should have in your life. You know, it talked about don't die with your music still in you, you know, and it's mm. like, what do you have a passion for? What do you, wh- what makes you sing, you know? Right. And the more I thought about that, the more I thought, well, I think in due time, I'll be able to, uh, really see that in a bigger, in a bigger way. Right now, I feel like I'm doing it, but in a in sort of a smallish way. What do and you I, mean? I hope that it will grow. It's kind of like your podcast. You're doing it now. It's just starting off. It's small, but you want it to grow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I feel like, so I feel like, you know, in due time, things will grow for us and things will manifest in a big way and we can be able to really witness it. And right now, sometimes, or or whenever we're starting off on a new journey, even those those first steps are small, and you don't always see the fruits of your labor. You know, you've got to kind of put some time in before you actually see the results. Mm-hmm. And it's important not to give up in those times. It's important not to. It's true. Not to worry about the eventual outcome, but to have faith that mm-hmm. you're going in the right direction. And as long right. as you keep moving. Right. That's my message for today as I went on my jog today was like, you've got to keep moving, you know, no matter what, just keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. And in fact, uh, whenever we talk about stuff that's regarding negative, thing, negative meaning things that we don't want, it, we, we, we choose X, but we don't choose Y. And all the Ys, we, we want to keep the Ys away. So as I think about those, I realize that any time that I'm trying to understand why there's a time delay, you mentioned time. And why I'm not getting what I want and why there seems to be more negatives and positives than I would like. Um, I realize that there are always just two factors that are causing the delays, the stuff showing up that I don't want and so on and so forth. The first factor, well, I, perhaps I should say three factors. First factor, I guess, would be focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing on what you don't want rather than what you want. Yeah. Second factor would be focusing on what you want or seemingly focusing on what you want. But as it turns out, you're actually focusing on the lack of what you want. And that's usually the way we start our uh, requests. We, 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 request, we don't usually request things that we already have. We, we try to assume the feeling of what we are sure. uh, of already having it, but we don't right. usually already have it. So in a sense, at the moment we make the request, we're in a position of lack. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to get ourselves into that feeling of having rather than the feeling of lack. So yes. the feeling of lack might be described as the second um, cause of something not showing up that we want to have to show up. And then the third thing would be any other kind of resistance that we put up that makes us doubt or in some way focus on the opposite or focus on or, or, or cease our, our focus on feeling good most of the time, you know, because that, that you have to be in that uh, good feeling place. That's why we do your daily dose of happy because we want to encourage everybody to be in that happy place. Um, so not being in a happy place is where we tend to be focusing on the wrong stuff. And in the process of focusing on the wrong stuff, we get the wrong stuff. So it, it becomes like this, well, it's the negative vortex. That's what, what we call it. Right. So, yeah, vicious circle. And really, yeah. three and one are really the same. I'm two ways of saying the same thing. So it's it's focusing on lack and focusing on the wrong stuff. That Those are the two ways I would describe it. So whenever we have a time delay, we know that the law of attraction and, and source energy likes to deliver using the law of attraction or, or in response to, to the law of attraction. It likes to deliver very quickly, if it can. So the only reason it's if not it going can, to get and that's where, and that's where I notice there are some things that take time to pull all of the elements together. 
And sometimes the universe, in order for you for it to deliver what you want, has to pull things in that maybe need time to set up. They they need time to sort of gel before you can actually get them to, to connect with other things because everything is so interconnected mm -hmm. that sometimes the things that you want need time for all the little things to come together and for all the things to, to set up to, to, to actually happen. So I think sometimes the universe just takes time sometimes to deliver things. I know Abraham says, oh, you can have things immediately, but um, I think it depends on what it is. Well, I would say with those things that require time to set up, I understand what you're saying. And certainly I thought about the same thing myself. I think with, the, with, with that situation, we could describe that as a series of resistances that are in the way. So um, 15 things have to happen in, in order for X to show up in your life. And those 15 things each have a resistance point that has to be worked through before. It's kind of like the water, the stream flowing through stuff, having to work its way down to the bottom. So you have resistance points every step of the way. And when I look at it that way, I realize that, yes, all those resistance points can be tied to my thinking and probably are because there are so many different ways to resist. That we don't even have to think hard about it. I mean, we know, for instance, from quantum physics, from just general source energy theory, that even though this pen seems to be firm and hard and solid and it's always a pen, in fact, it's mostly empty space. In fact, if you can actually see yeah. the molecules, if you can actually see the atoms and electrons, they take up very, very little of that overall space, which is bizarre. But nevertheless, that is the case. And yet, to me and to you and to all the people looking, that is a solid pen. Well, that fact that we believe it's a solid pen is a resistance point. It's a resistance point that prevents us from believing that that pen can turn into a mouse. I mean, we just, we see that as a pen. We believe that's a pen. And that's a pretty strong resistance point. You know, so how long would it take us to let go of that to turn it into a mouse? Probably quite some time because we have a lot of resistance about that, you know? So if you look yeah. at, you look at all the different things that can happen in order to try to manifest a certain thing, if we got resistance points all along there, yeah, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. And it's not because the well, universe I, is slow, it's because we're I'm... slow. We have to, we have to let go of all this stuff. Well, I think what I'm referring to more is not not so much our resistance about things, because there there certainly is a lot of that, and I, I agree with you that we have a, there's a lot of resistance points that we don't even think about. That oh yeah. That 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 <clears throat> basically reflecting our own prevention of the universe allowing it to come into our existence. But I also think that, and I'll give you a good example. Um, so at the Buttonwood Tree, I was hoping for a Steinway piano. The piano we had was terrible. And you know this story, mm -hmm. right? But, and I did not offer, honestly, uh, in all honesty, I really didn't offer a lot of thought about it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. When I did think about it, it was in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm hoping it'll come. And I never put a timeline on it and hoping, right, hoping it would come. Well, so three years later, the piano shows up. Well, there's not a lot of people out there who are going to donate a baby grand Steinway piano to a nonprofit art organization in Middletown, Connecticut. There's just not a lot of people knocking on my door, calling me up, <laughs> saying, hey, I want to give you a Steinway, you know? So the universe had to wait for that, that man to move. And as it happened, as the universe arranged it all, it, it happened at just the right time when I was putting down a new floor and had to move my piano out. So I don't think it was me blocking it or resisting that, that from happening. I think it was just the universe needed the time in order, for, you know, the, the piano wasn't ready to come yet. You know, the, the channels were all open, but it wasn't time for the piano to come yet because the guy who was going to donate the piano didn't move yet. So when he was ready to move, then it happened because that's when that element, that part of it was ready. And so I think that that's, I, I see that that has happened in many times, many times in my life where things take a while to manifest because of all the pieces out in the universe that involve other people or other 
programs or other institutions or something. And, and so that gives me a lot of, I guess, uh, I guess a little bit more hope, but I, I have a lot of hope anyway, but it gives me the allowance to be more patient and say, okay, maybe it's not me that's resisting right now. Maybe it's just the universe needs time. And it, it sort of takes me off the hook from being the sole blocker of this thing to manifest in my life, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it encourages me to be more positive. Mm -hmm. It encourages me to not look at the fact that I don't have it yet, but to be hopeful and excited because it's on its way. And I feel like it's on its way, you know, whatever it is, it's on its way and it's going to get here at just the right time when <laughs> I'm ready and it's ready and it's going to be great. And, and so that's really exciting to me. And that really is helpful for me to remember that piece that it's not just always me that's blocking it. It's the universe sometimes needs time to set it up in its own divine time. Okay. I see that. Uh, in fact, I've often felt the same thing myself about various kinds of things that I was waiting for in my life. But I also yeah. have to re recognize something else. And you said it right at the beginning there. Because, I mean, what you said made total sense to me. I mean, I would probably have come to the same conclusion. But what you said was, there can't be that many people out there to, to donate a piano. That is a point of resistance. I mean, we don't like to think of well, it, but it is. It's a point of resistance. Which Our belief is just there aren't that many people out there willing to, to, denote, to donate, so therefore there won't be. Well, <laughs> but, I'm just, I'm but just I thought to myself, but I didn't really think to myself, oh, there aren't a lot of many, there aren't a lot of people out there who want to donate a piano. My thought was, there is somebody out there mm -hmm. who will want to donate a piano. Mm -hmm. I, I had to have that hope and I had that hope and I had that, that persistent belief that there was somebody out there mm -hmm. who would donate a piano. Mm -hmm. Was I thinking to myself, oh, there are thousands of people out there who will donate a piano no. to me? No. But no. I was I was absolutely sure that there was somebody out there who would donate a piano. So I see what you mean about resisting because there wasn't a lot of people, but I I had the belief that there was somebody out and, there. And I, I don't think oh. we, we hit those resistance points intentionally at all. I mean, that one just that's one of those points that just kind of slips in there. And I think there are a lot of those. There are a lot more, perhaps, than we even recognize. Um, for instance, you mentioned that uh, you were very hopeful that someone would donate the piano, and that's a good position to take. It also has a small degree of resistance with it, because hope isn't at the very top of the scale. It's near the top, but it's got a little bit of resistance in there. Well, so there's another resistance point. Is that all by itself a resistance point that will stop a piano from showing up for three years? I, I can't say that. I, if, I'm going to guess that it probably wouldn't. But my point is, there's yet another resistance point. These resistance points, they, they, they work their way into our understanding in so many ways that we don't even notice them most of the time. We don't even pay attention to them. We, we can hardly discern them. So th I think that's why, in my experience, and I, probably other people's experience, I find that as I go through life and I'm wondering where stuff is and so forth, and then I find another resistance point, and I find another one, and then I find another one, and then I find another one, I say to myself, my God, how many resistance points am I going to run into here? And I get the sense of there's a lot of them out there, or actually there's a lot of them in here. A lot of them that, I mean, I just kind of take for granted because I always have, and that's what we do as human beings. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I think it's just part of being human. But ultimately, I have to admit to myself, yeah, I'm the one who's blocking. I'm not doing it deliberately. I certainly wouldn't want to do it deliberately. I want that piano to show up. I really, really want it, you know. Do I intend to put those resistance points up? Absolutely no. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. Half the time, I'm or three quarters of the time. I don't even realize I'm putting them up there. But I do. And I've learned that by recognizing that, I am able to move them out of the way quicker. Because now I'm not waiting for some sort of a fate to happen. I'm not waiting for some sort of, oh, I have to be patient for some X amount of time. Um, Abraham talks about how they're not really fans of patience. And... Right, I, right. I see why. I mean, it does make sense. There's, there's really no need to be patient except for the fact that we are self-limiting. And, you know, that's just part of 
where we are in our development. That's all there is to it. That's as far as we've gotten. Um, do I want to get further? Yes. Am I trying to learn to get further? Yes. Am I getting better at it? Yes. Have I gotten there? Well, as Abraham says, you never get it wrong and, you, and you'll never get it done. It's just... <laughs> That's right. I listen to that statement a lot in my head. We'll never get it done. So just keep on moving and keep on going where you want to go and don't worry. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's so much that the universe has to take its time to get here or, or that it, it, it needs to happen in its own way. I think it's that we need it to happen in our own way. I think we, it, it, the, the, the general example they give in The Secret, for instance, if, is if you think about an elephant, all of a sudden an elephant showing up in your living room would be really, really inconvenient. So that's why you need to have that, that uh, time delay in there. And that kind of touches on it. But I, I think what it really amounts to is if we had everything showing up immediately, would our human brains be able to handle it? Would they be able to handle what was going on? And I don't know. Maybe Maybe they could. But maybe they couldn't. <laughs> maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's where some of the resistance comes in. I mean, we do know that um, since emotion is a big portion of the overall puzzle, in other words, if we feel good, really, really good about the thing that we're asking for, we're speeding it up, we're, we're accelerating it, we're making it more and more likely it's going to manifest, turn into something physical for us. Because, yeah. because of that fact, um, certainly we, it, it becomes really incumbent upon us to be as happy as we can be, to feel as good as we can feel. But nevertheless, we're still on this journey. And in, on this journey, we're learning things, we're developing, we're getting stronger, we're, we're developing our skills, we're practicing. And I don't know, that's what, that's what makes sense to me. Yeah, well, we certainly are all practicing and learning. And, well, some of us are learning, some of us are not learning, some of us are just trekking through life. And- <laughs> <laughs> not, not aware of what's going on, but I think yeah. others are are more aware, and I think that that's really good. Um, By the way, Bronwyn uh, wants you to know she agrees with you. She says, I, I sure believe in being patient, and it shows up in perfect timing. So she agrees with you. Great. And Sreda is saying hi sh- from Oklahoma. I want to say hello to Sreda because I don't remember seeing her name before. In January, hi, we haven't seen you in a while. Happy New Year to you, too. So, yes, just want to say hello to a few people. Nice. Nice. I take it no questions yet. No, everybody seems to know all the answers, so I think we're okay on that for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have them on the show. They could explain it all to us, right? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, That's if you do good. have any questions you want us to discuss, you know, feel free. And if you're listening to the live stream, type something into the uh, the comments section. We'll be glad to talk about it because we love talking about topics brought up by our listeners. Yes, yes. Yeah. I would love to spend a few minutes just talking about how I think it's um, it's such a great time in our human evolution, and I, I feel that more and more people are coming together in unity and aware of our power within mm. and aware that we need to come together uh, and aware that we're not separate from one another. And I think that's one of the big um, misconceptions of life is that we're all separate we're all separate from each other. We're all separate from God, and and we're all separate from, you know, whatever. And 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 we're not. We're all connected. And I think that more and more people are getting that, and mm. more peace gatherings are happening. And you know, we just had a peace gathering on the thirty first. Oh yeah, how did that go? I forgot to ask you about that. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, the weather was. Uh, relatively calm and it was relatively warm. It was in the mid forties and, uh, um, it was just, a, it was, it was a, a beautiful event. Uh, Hannah's field, Hannah and, uh, bliss came to do the singing and the leading of us in song. So we sang songs together and they did a ceremony with fire where we burned our burdens and we, uh, had we also burned our hopes for the future and the, describe how that works see. too for people who have never seen that kind of a process or never heard about that process. Well, how we did it was we had a table set up where people could write down their their burdens, things that they wanted to let go of from the past, whether it be a regret or a problem with someone, or they needed to forgive, or they needed to give up guilt or they, whatever the situation was. 
somehow I just lost you, Walt, but no, you, uh, I don't know what you did, but I'm going to just keep talking. So Can you, can you, oh, I see my video turned off. Oh, hold on, hang on a second. Yeah, your, your video is off, but I'm still going. So I'll let you try to work on that while I tell the story. I there should be, are. I should be back now. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I, I'm You're operating back. two computers at once, and that's probably, I probably hit the wrong key. That was probably my fault. But anyway, uh, I guess so. go ahead with your story. So anyway, uh, people were encouraged to write down things that they wanted to let go of and put them in this bag. Uh, marked with burdens and then likewise people could write down things that they were hoping for for the new year or things that they wanted to manifest wanted to see in the new year we put that into a bag called hopes and then uh, we did the ceremony where we all stood around in a circle we all held hands and she started us off by visualizing the fire and visualizing um just a peaceful setting, whatever was peacefulness to us, and um, and holding a feeling of love in your heart and connectedness. Mm -hmm. So we sat for a little while in just the time of imagining and taking some deep breaths. And then she led us sort of on a guided meditation almost through the release of all the things that we didn't want, the things that we wanted to let go of. She talked about them, and, and just, it was like a guided meditation, really, as we stood there and watched them burn. And, and then we went through it again with the hopes. And it was, um, and meanwhile, Andrew Prue, is our, who was our, our drum leader at the Buttonwood Tree, he leads drumming circles and sound healings. He walked around all of us with a drum. And so you could feel the vibrations from the drum sure. coming and going and um, and then the crackle of the fire and the sounds from the meditation, you know, the guided meditation. It was just really sweet. And, uh, That's nice. and speaking of sweet, we had lime and orchards, uh, apple cider, hot, oh. hot apple cider with oh. cinnamon, which is really good. That's really tasty stuff. So, yeah. So it was it was a great time. It was a great time. It was really wonderful. And then we, at the end, we put the ashes right into the river. So it was kind of like our our thoughts, our hopes, our prayers, our everything was transmuted right into the river. Mm -hmm. And it was it was really nice. So I'm I'm sorry you couldn't be there. Hopefully next year. Yeah. Next year we'll that would have been great. There. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously Louise was still in a healing pattern, so we we couldn't really do it. But uh, sounds like you guys had a did you have a good turnout too? I mean, it sounds like you had a great event. It, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't a huge turnout. It no. was less than fifty people, but oh, mm -hmm. it was. It was still great. It was well, still good. great. You know, it's well. Fifty is actually still, pretty good considering all the situation you had with your venue, because you you'd let the, the word out that you'd had trouble with the venue. So having fifty people anyway, that's still a very good turnout. Yeah. Well, we didn't hit that fifty number, but it was. It was. It's way there, so That's it good. was good. good. It was good, and the people that were there were so happy to be there, and uh, were so grateful that we did it. Yeah. You know, it was really nice, and we got to—I got to read a letter from Anita, who does our Saturday morning workshop called right. "Aligned with Source," mm -hmm. and it was very powerful. All the things she talked about for 2019, and the the energies that were going to be in play for 2019, the. The unity through partnerships and associations and uh, water. It's a, this is a water year now, so it was really cool that we put the ashes into the water because water is going to play big this year. So, and why do you say that? It's part of the numerology of this year. It's oh, I part see. Part of what what uh, what we're in store for. Okay. Um, also, nature is going to be big, so try to get out into nature as much as possible and really connect. Give yourself time to connect with nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we actually so, we actually do have a question, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we have something to talk about. And uh, this is from Soretta, who uh, said she – this is the first time I've seen her name uh, commenting in the comments section, but she says she's been lurking for quite some time. And uh, <laughs> after mentioning the, the lurking – let me just uh, do this here. She mentioned that she's got an issue with her daughter that she wanted to ask about. And, and she said she has to duck out, but she'll listen to the recorded podcast to hear what we have to say about it. So she says, I'm very good in the area of manifesting, but I have a significant problem right now. My daughter is in a bad situation, and I am worrying. 
even though my brain knows this isn't the way to do it, so I need some help. Um, she is an adult, for our information, and uh, she just needs some help manifesting the best life for her daughter. So you want to take your first stab at that, or do you want me to do it first? Well, I speaking from experience, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... Right there with you. <laughs> right there with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's not an easy one. No. Uh, you know, it's not an easy one because I think worry isn't just a natural part of being a mother and, or being a human being that worry comes to us. And the trick is to let go of the worry as soon as you can recognize it Absolutely. and yeah. replace it with um uh, faith or assurance that everything's going to be fine and that she's learning her lesson in the time that she needs to learn her lesson and sometimes it takes a long time to learn lessons i know myself my mother had to be a patient for a long time while i learned lessons and it was decades before i actually like got it you know and so it's hard as a parent to sit back and watch your children at whatever age, kind of especially as as adult children, because now you know that they have, number one, they're supposed to be getting it already, and they're supposed to have their act together, which a lot of times they don't. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't have as much influence over them as you used to. True. So, And you have to kind of give them their room, and you have to kind of give them their space, because they need to be independent, and you want right. to encourage their independence. And you want them to be independent. But, I mean, you, you don't want them to be dependent on you. Exactly, exactly. You really want to encourage their independence, and yet you you want them to be doing things that you know are best for them. Mm -hmm. And so... It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do, to let go of that worry and replace it with assurance that everything's going to work out fine. And what I try to do is I try to visualize a particular scene where they're doing what I think that they should be doing for their best, mm -hmm. you know. Or I picture my son with a, a happy, with a wife and, and, and a family and a child and a house and just happy and and healthy looking, you know, and, and, um, and my daughter, um, I, I picture her being strong and standing up for what she wants and being a, a very uh, successful artist. She's an amazing artist, uh, but she's not, she's not seeing all the benefits from that yet. So mm -hmm. she's got a lot, a lot to learn yet. So I kind of picture them being where I, I want them to be. Right. And uh, it's not easy, so good luck. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I agree with you. I think you're absolutely on the right track. Um, whenever you're talking about two different people involved in the same situation, you're talking about two people who are who have indep independent individual wills. I mean, you, you mentioned earlier how we are all interconnected, and that is true. And simultaneously, we're all individuals. We are both. We are connected, and we are individual. We are uh, all part of the same, and we are unique at the same time, which is right, right, which is quite a concept, but it's true. And because of that, the the fact that we have two different people involved, first of all, it means sometimes the wants are going are not going to be the same. Um, depending on how close you are to each other, uh, you, you, if you're really close to each other, then even if the wants aren't the same, you're probably both respectful of the other and both wanting what the other person wants for them rather than. Uh, wanting what you want for them. Um, but that's also a good thing to look at sometimes. I mean, if if you can look at it honestly and realize, well, what I'm wanting for her is really something she doesn't want for herself, then you got to take another look at the, the picture and see how can you support her in what it is that she does want, um, which is, again, another challenge situation. I mean, sometimes people's parents think that, uh, well, they don't like the, the, the wants that their kids have in mind, especially their adult kids. They They... That's not the thing they should be wanting. They should be wanting this thing over here. And the kid is saying, no, 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 I want this over here. Well, you can't, that's not likely to happen. You should be wanting this thing over here. Oh, no, no, I want this thing over here. And that's, that's hard. It's hard. Um, it's, what, one of the things that's involved here is trust. Because when you're a parent and you're dealing with a child before they become an adult, that child needs to trust you completely. And, 
to the degree that that trust is there, you're able to succeed helping them uh, grow up as a parent. When they become an adult, that, well, actually in the process of becoming an adult, that trust also becomes two ways because to the degree that the parent is able to trust the child is the degree to which the child is empowered to grow the way they need to grow. I mean, it's a hard thing. We, we, want, we want them to grow a certain way, but we also have to trust who they are inside to grow in the way that's right for them. And, and the two don't always dovetail. They don't always follow the same path. So that, that's yeah. where a lot of the challenge comes in. But I agree with you. The best thing to do is to kind of hold that, that child, that adult child in your mind, kind of create a space for them of their highest positive good and try to hold it in terms of what they think their highest positive good is which is not always easy to do, but try to, to figure out what, what is their highest positive good, perhaps the one that you feel best about, that you can imagine them in. Because what usually happens when we are feeling a very high level of concern, worry, that sort of thing about a person in our family is we have, as human beings, a tendency to look at all the things that are going wrong, the things that we wish they were doing differently. And we forget in the process what the picture is of what it's like when they're doing things that are to their own best good that we love about them and that we lo- that they love about them. We forget what that picture looks like. We get really good at looking at the other picture, the one that says, well, they really should be doing this and they really should be doing that and they, I wish they were doing that and why is she doing that and why is she doing that? That's the wrong picture. That's the picture that gets you into that negative vortex in the first place. So that's the big challenge. To what degree can we get them into that mental space where we're just holding them there and saying, I just want the best possible possible result for my daughter um, that matches up as well as it can to what she wants in her life and, and just focus on that and believe in that and feel good about that. That's what I did with Louise. When Louise was going through this big medical uh-huh. situation, which turned yeah. out to be a, um, a thyroid issue, a hyperthyroid issue, and had, uh, it was a pretty severe one, too. I mean, from what we've heard, a lot of people have thyroid issues. We've been learning a lot about that. Uh, I didn't know this. Did you know one quarter of all adults have thyroid issues? One quarter. And a lot of them don't know it. I didn't. I was blown away by that. But that's what the, uh, yeah, that's what the last doc We've seen a lot of doctors. That's what the most recent doctor told us. One out of four. And it's fascinating that there are that many, but there are some people who really kind of suffer. They get the, the kind of the rough end of the stick. And that's what Louise has been getting. I mean, cause she's really been suffering. We, we told this particular doctor, he was a cardiologist, um, what it is that she's been going through. And he says, wow, you've been dealing with that. That's like, it was unusual. Like what we were yeah. going through was, was really pretty severe for somebody with a thyroid issue. Yeah. So that, there was a lot there to deal with, a lot to be yeah, frightened about, sure. a, a lot to be scared of. And yet, in the, in the face of all that, both of us, particularly, uh, and I, I don't remember if I told you the whole story. I know I told everybody on the podcast, but um, yeah, no, er, I, early, early I, on where we I, thought that there was a, a, a possibility it was Parkinson's disease. Yeah, no, you told, yeah, I know. I did the, tell you yeah. okay. I, know, I know the story, yeah. Yeah. And everybody else does, too. I told that story recently. But... Um, when we thought it was Parkinson's disease, because we had both watched my father uh, succumb to symptoms related to Parkinson's, I got this huge, huge desire to help her. Because mm-hmm. I, I definitely did not want to see her go through the same thing my father had gone through. And I knew I, I had enough um, presence of mind to realize that I couldn't keep focusing on, no, I don't want her to have Parkinson's disease. Because that would be the wrong track. I had to focus right, right, on right. Louise being healthy, Louise being energetic, Louise being lively and doing all the things that she loves to do and, and you know, just thriving in life. That's the, the image that I had to grasp and to hold on to. And it, it was a challenge. Because when you're in the midst of something like that, that's not so easy to do. But I did it. And one of the things that made it relatively easy for me was how much I love her. So... I mean, I didn't have to build the passion up very high. That, that was just kind of right through the roof, right there. Right. All I had to do was just kind of ride, you know, ride the tiger, so to speak. And the way I rode the tiger was by grabbing a photo of the two of us about uh, 
what was it, about uh, 15 years ago, when we were in Seattle. And this photo, I mean, we're both smiling, we're happy, you can just tell we're just having a great deal of time. So I was nice. visioning, uh, visioning her in that photo. That's the way she was in that photo. That was the way yeah, I was trying sure. to get her to be. And it works. That's great. That, I mean, yeah. we, we know what the result is. The, work, the result's been fantastic. So yeah. that, that's what I think you have to do with, with the daughter, too. You, you just have to find that really, really high place. Take advantage of the fact that you love her so much. Use that as the way to build passion up. And then direct that passion in the positive direction. Whether or not she's going to be receptive to it is another matter. But if your relationship has any, any good to it, and it probably does, then, yeah, it's going to help her. It's going to help her tremendously. So, yeah. I mean, we're saying the same thing. I'm kind of saying it in a more long-winded way. But that's what you got to do. got to hold her in that high-flying place. Yeah. And just, and just trust, you know, and just yeah. trust it'll work out. And it's not easy. It's not easy, but, uh, but good luck. Yeah. It's also, there is another side to it. You're right. It's not easy, but in a sense, it is easy if you allow that love to take over. That's what I found with Louise, because once I just allow, I allowed it to just kind of, you know, spurt out of me, so to speak. And, and when I just, when that love was just spurting, it, it, it actually didn't take a lot of effort. In fact, it really took no effort at all. The, mm. the, big, the biggest effort was just, you know, just waiting it out. Just, you know, I know it's going to work out good. I know it's going to work out good. Just waiting it out and just seeing what was going to happen. And it played out fairly quickly, actually. As these things go, it, failed, it played out very, very quickly. Because the Parkinson's thing got eliminated yeah. within two days. And then, you know, what was it, uh, three, three and a half weeks later, we had the uh, Christmas Eve miracle. So... You know, it, it didn't take all that long, which is a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Really, all in all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you started on that track of going to the doctor, really, it didn't. You know, some people, some people suffer for years and years and years not knowing, not having a good diagnosis. So. And it's funny, too, because we've been through, oh, God, I don't know how many doctors we've been through. I'm, I'm so glad about the insurance we have that we just got in time for all this thing because it's covered us tremendously. But, uh, I mean, the expense would have been ridiculous otherwise. But having gone yeah. through all these doctors, the, the bottom line is that they believe that this kind of, uh, of experience she had with the, atri uh, the, the um, atrial fibrillation, um, they think it's going to keep coming back. It's going to be recurring. Really? And, yep. That, that, well, they don't actually say it that way, but they, they hint at it strongly. Oh, you know, we have people who have five or six episodes a year. You know, they say that kind of thing a lot. Wow. And as we come out of each of the, one of those meetings, Louise and I have both looked at each other and said the same thing. Well, that's not going to be me. That's not going to be her. Maybe those other people, but nope, not going to happen here. Right. <laughs> right. You're done. You're just done, done with it. That's it. You know, now it's just keep improving, improving, improving until they can just wean her off the medication entirely and we're done. No, no big deal. That's the way we feel about it. So yeah, well, that's that, good. That's, I hope that's how it happens. But that's the advantage when, when you have that passion that builds up in the first place like that, then you're just riding the journey so that you, you come up with somebody giving you something that doesn't really fit with what you had in mind. You shrug it off. It doesn't even bother you. You don't even have to work at it. You just shrug it off because it just doesn't fit what you had in mind. You know, so right. you just go with it, <laughs> right? Which is kind of a funny thing. Hey, we got right. a couple minutes left. Uh, I want to make sure I do get the messages in about uh, uh, subscribing and sharing. You'll have uh, links in all of the places where we post this, or most of the places where we post this. You'll have links for subscribing if you're not yet already a subscriber. Um, and if you don't see links, they're on the homepage of our website at LOAToday.net. So if you have not yet subscribed, get all the episodes coming right to your smartphone every single time that we publish them. And uh, it's free, doesn't cost you anything, and boy, you're going to get some great episodes because every single one of them is different. And then once you're a subscriber, share the fact. Tell other people that you're sharing the fact. Um, and uh, Nasha taught us a good lesson the other day. Make sure you're a little bit selective about who you share with. Share with people who you think might be receptive to it. Don't share it with somebody. You know, don't share it with Uncle Milton, who who thinks all this stuff is a bunch of woo woo. That's just not a good idea. <laughs> You're not going to accomplish anything good. You could get yourself in trouble with Facebook. Don't don't give yourself that problem. You know, just share share where you think there's some receptivity, and, right. and you know you can like all you want. You can comment all you want. That's all great. Just be careful where you share it because we don't want to get you in trouble anywhere. So those are uh -huh. the two. Yeah, got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Actually, and how can they get your book? 
Oh, that's true. I haven't advertised the book in a long time. Um, well, the book's available in Amazon. That's probably the easiest place to go. And just do a Google on, or not a Google, do an Amazon search for your daily dose of happy. It'll pop right up. It's available both in paperback and in Kindle. And Anne Marie has a story in there, as does her husband Mike. So she she is a co-author. That's probably why you thought of it, isn't it? Because you helped write the book. <laughs> and I, well, I was thinking, and as a distributor too, people can go. Oh, that's to the true. Journey. Oh yeah, and that's right. There. Yeah, anybody who's in yeah. Central Connecticut area, absolutely, go to the Buttonwood. Right. Yeah. Yeah, if you're in Central Connecticut, right, anywhere near Middletown, right, you can come there. Uh, you can come see our events at Buttonwood.org, and if you go to my Facebook page, actually, uh, the Buttonwood Tree. Uh, or Anne Marie Kanata McEwen, you can see pictures from the Fire of Hope. Oh, nice! Yeah, very good. Yeah. What's, what's coming up now? I mean, do you have any any particularly interesting events coming up that people should know about that we can tell in the last couple minutes here? Well, we have a really big event in April. On April fifth, we have a big Celtic rock show coming up. Ooh. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, but um, we have an, uh, the 14th Annual Composers and Improvisers Festival, which will be January 19th if you're into improvised jazz. Three big uh, big names in, in that world, Joe Fonda, Kevin Norton, and Taylor Ho- Hobinum, are going to be doing a, a, a long night of music at the Buttonwood. Um, and so you can find out more at buttonwood.org. Uh, or email me at thebuttonwoodtree at gmail.com. And you live stream some of these, don't you? I've seen uh, sometimes I do. You, you take your phone, you're live streaming some of the events. We do, we do. So yeah. you can always, if you friend us on Facebook or follow us on Facebook, you can uh, tune in sometimes and and, uh, and see, yeah. So feel free to friend me on Facebook uh, and let me know you want to uh, connect with the Buttonwood Tree. Yeah, that, well, that, that's good. Considering most of our listeners are around the world, that means anybody could listen in just by knowing how to find yeah. that live stream. So, yeah, yeah that's, no, that's why I wanted true. to mention that. We have um, we have a, a violinist who plays with Loggins and Messina. Oh no, kidding! You're old enough to remember uh, Loggins Absolutely. and Messina. These twenty year olds probably don't, but uh, yeah. So that's going to be a nice show. I believe that's on January 25th. Gary Oliar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he, he, I never heard of his name before, but he came to the Buttonwood Tree as part of another trio earlier, and it's like, wow, you are amazing! <laughs> like, the, you know, just some people who have played for thirty years or twenty years, maybe, who have been on tour all around the world, and they played with stars and you know, real professionals. Oh yeah, you just they just have this air about them of such. Number one, it feels so nice. Mm -hmm. They're so kind and Mm -hmm. humble. And Mm -hmm. I mean, not all of them, but certainly the ones that I've met, these are like common traits among the big ones is they're kind and they're humble and they're gracious. And they just, they just reek of pure positive energy. Oh, nice. And the music they produce is just stellar. Mm. It's just so enveloping and makes you just, feel so good you know just listening to the music you just right. feel good yeah so um so and kenny, like, kenny loggins it's, it's some of my favorite songs are by kenny loggins so uh anybody really? who's playing, oh yeah well one of my favorites is uh footloose which was also the movie uh for many years ago right and, and plus right. He, he did both Poo, house of Pooh corner and return to house of Pooh corner which are both really cute you know very very you know make you feel good songs positive songs they are yeah I love both of them. They are, yeah. Well, you'll have to come to the show. You'll enjoy. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be really fun. So, yeah. Well, great. That's that's good to hear. Um, yeah. Anything coming up specifically this week? Uh, this weekend. Oh, I can't remember what's coming up this weekend. I don't. Oh, that's all right. I was I was just asking you off the top of your head. If you can't think of it, that's no big deal. I was just going. Gonna... I can I know we have an art show on Thursday on a Sunday coming up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sunday the 13th, actually a week from today, from 2 to 4 p.m., we have an art show. Okay. Well, and, oh, I know. On um, So Friday we have a really nice jazz quartet, and then on, actually, quintet, five people. And then oh, nice. on Saturday we have some of my friends coming back, Indigo Soul. They play, like, uh-huh. R&B, um, bluesy music. She's a, a great singer and really mm-hmm. nice kind of laid-back, mellow kind of singer. And so that'll be a trio on Saturday and a quintet on 
um, Friday, a jazz quintet. Um, mostly standards, that kind of thing, things you can relate to. Very good. All right. Well, this has been great. Uh, we've used up the hour, but we had a good time talking. We got a nice question from the audience, too. So all very worthwhile. And marie it's been great, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Thanks, Walt. Peace, everybody. Love, everybody. Thank you, Walt. Absolutely. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.